Hello, and welcome to Activate and Thrive, and to our weekly Thriving Thursday interview, where we chat with different beautiful health-minded people, uh, just about various different aspects of health, of thriving in life. And uh, we run these uh, chats every Thursday at noon Eastern US time. And we run them here live on our Facebook page, Activate and Thrive. And we also uh, share them on Instagram and YouTube. So whether you're with us live today or watching later on one of our platforms, we're very glad that you've joined us. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm Don Krishnaswamy. And I'm Mia Krishnaswamy. And our guest today is Renee Chambers Lisiaga. This gal and I go way back, uh, <laughs> shall I even say, late 80s, we were babies, okay? <laughs> Renee was born in Philly and she grew up in New Jersey and she is a product of the Philadelphia Sound. Her father was a studio musician with Philadelphia International Records. Um, he's the late Roland Chambers and her mother also sang in the 60s doo-wop group The Orlans, spending her childhood growing up with artists like Gladys Knight and Lou Rawls and Phyllis Hyman and the performing arts runs very deep in her DNA. She was, she was meant to be doing what she's doing. She also trained at the Pennsylvania Ballet um, and Adelphi University. She's worked with some of the finest mentors in the performing arts. Uh, her career spans over 25 years and 12 countries. She's worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber. She's worked with Mercedes Ellington, Donny Osmond, the late Michael Jackson. So, and she has numerous Broadway credits and I, I'm, I could go on and on and on, but um, She's been seen on USA Network's TV show, The Moment, in which she worked with Jamie King's new hot boy band, I Am Five, under the mentoring of Liz Imperio, who's JLo's choreographer. So, you know, we could go on and on and on, but this gal is, is a, a mover and shaker in more ways than one. And we'll put her, her website, which is renelisiaga.com, in the comments. So... Hey, my friend, <laughs> let's welcome, let's jump right in, you know, Just tell us what, tell us what you've been doing lately, because I know you've been working with children in an orphanage in Uganda, and I know you've been working with children in the St. John Virgin Islands, and just tell us how all that came about, because our subject, of course, today is just how we can pour into the mental health of our young people. And so just, can you share a little bit about how that evolved and welcome? <laughs> Whoops, our, oh, is our sure. internet good? Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, I think hey. we're good, yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mia, thank you so much, Don. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, this mama is in front of my computer once again, so I got the regular glasses. And I got the blue light glasses, so which is really important to be able to make sure we maintain our eyes. So if I keep switching between my eyeglasses, that's why, everyone. But konnichiwa. <laughs> uh, as, as Mia says, oh, wow, we go way back. We worked for Tokyo Disney. She was in the Diamond Horseshoe Review, the lead singer. I was a kid of the kingdom. And some of those friendships and relationships have lasted over 30 plus years. Uh, and we are still pouring into the next generation. So I thank you and Don for having me come on uh, to just share my uh, experiences. Uh, it's been a blessing. I always knew, even though when I was very young, I always knew that I wanted to dance and be on Broadway and dance with Mickey Mouse, which I did all those things. But <laughs> Um, I, I actually grew up, you know, on my mother's side of the family is three generations of educators. They've always taught and they've always used, you know, music and the performing arts and education and blended it. So over the last few years, I met with other uh, musical directors, a lady by the name of Andrea Green, who writes children's musicals, her own musicals about, you know, empathy and diversity and coming together and sharing and caring about others. And this is what really drew me to her when she had asked me four years ago to start choreographing a performing arts camp in St. John in the Virgin Islands. So shout out to St. John and Kim, who is the executive director there um, through the ASCAP Foundation. Actually, we were able to go over there and I was her choreographer and we would put a, a full show, like a full hour and a half musical 
Original musical with original songs, choreography, with campers from seven years old to 13 or 14 in the beautiful Virgin Islands, and we would have a big production, big live show. Well, last year we didn't have it because of COVID, and this year we didn't have it either. So we went to the Zoomical. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let I me love it. Oh, let me tell you, that's oh. why I have these. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you, know, you know, I mean, you know, depending upon, you know, the Wi-Fi, sometimes we would glitch out, you know, and, and, and so I'm teaching the kids and, you know, they want to reverse everything. And I'm like, no, the right foot, the right foot, you know, <laughs> so I would have to turn around and then do the movement at the same time so that we could be in sync. Uh, so uh, uh, with Andrea, how we came to help the orphanage in Uganda, actually it's called Care Africa. She had been working with these children, these orphans in Uganda for a few months prior. And they were doing music and they were sharing the different styles of, you know, the African rhythms and the Caribbean rhythms together. And she said, wouldn't this be beautiful that the children in St. John can share their experience because we're, we're under the same moon, but we have different faces. We live in different places, but let's do it together. And thus, our music video, hopefully, which will be coming out soon, will have us with the children from Uganda and the children from the Virgin Islands coming together, splicing all of what we learn in the two weeks on Zoom. I was on my phone on the WhatsApp for my students. We had a production meeting maybe three weeks ago, and it was kind of raining and thunderstorming here uh, in the South Jersey area, right? Um, the musical director and the, the composer of the of this show, she's in Pennsylvania. We had the kids in St. John and then Africa. We all go out on the Zoom screen because we're law and the kids in Africa still have the best Wi-Fi. I'm like, how is that possible? Don't you love it? Oh my gosh, you know, and listening to you talk about St. John Virgin Islands, my mother grew up in the Virgin Islands for her teen years. So uh, I yeah beautiful place to grow up but it is so incredible that you were able to coordinate those two areas like that and yeah. you know our mental health you know is influenced by so many factors and of course with what we've all been dealing with this last year and a half you know but the also the environment we grow up in and life happenings whatever how have you noticed your beautiful students from these two areas of the world? Um, how has all of this impacted their mental health? Oh, I, I, can, I can say, I can tell you that we did a live, live stream with both of them and everyone all together. And the children from St. John wrote letters to the children. Now it's not just, you know, children that are living in Uganda, these are orphans. That means they don't have any parents. They have no family. So the people that take care of them are their family. And the letters that they wrote and they read out loud to each other, I, I was just like, I, I was in tears because oh. I was just like, they are just so grateful and thankful for what they have in Uganda, just to have fresh water, just to have clothes on their backs. And for them, they said that music and dance and the celebration of their culture is what gives them joy. And I get that because that's what gives me joy when I'm having a rough day, when, you know what I mean? When I can't deal with things and we're adults, I'm an adult and I'm still trying to process, you know? And um, one of the things that I, I've, and it's important for me, and I wrote this down is for me, and especially these last two years is for the mental health of our children, whether we're caretakers, aunts, uncles, you know, godparents, it doesn't matter, right? It takes a village. It does. Is that we, I had to make sure that I had a heart check. Do you know what I mean? Like I had to check my heart first to go, wait a minute, am I being too rough? And I have two teenagers. Am I being too rough on my own children? Let me pull back. Let me take a breath. You know what I mean? Let me get some water. Let me get some fresh air. You know, what am I struggling with in my heart, you know, at 53? You know what I mean? And, and let me pull back. Where, where's the state of my heart and my mental health? before I can go ahead, you know what I mean? And, and go to my teenage son and ask him a question. And that was so important for me. Um, I wanna give an example, Mia, if you don't mind. Oh, please, I, oh, please share away. Yeah, this is an example. And of course, those of you that know me know I love to talk. So I had to write this down, but <laughs> I had to check 
because last year uh, was my son's junior year of high school. And you know, junior year is hard, right? You've got SATs, you know, he had biology, he has all this college work. He stayed home. We opted him to stay home and he was doing work from online. And he was getting so frustrated, you know, super frustrated because they were like, oh, just look it up. You can't teach yourself algebra two or trigonometry. You can't, do you know what? Sometimes you need a visual, like you need them to be on the whiteboard and write out the problem or you need for your teacher. It was a challenge, you know what I mean? For a lot of our kids to be able to learn virtually. There was no prom, basketball, all the sports got canceled. You know, he can't be with his friends. He's a sociable guy. You know, as far as the teenagers, they need their friends. They don't want to be with mom and dad all day. So I remembered what was important for me was I had to go ahead and I had to advocate for my son. I had to call, I had to pick up my phone and call his guidance counselor. I had to call his math teacher, his science teacher and said, please, you cannot send any more work home, any more Google docs or Google. I said, it's so much for them to process. You know, I said, they're in their homes, you know, in their rooms locked in for hours at a time. And you want them to do more worksheets? I said, this, you know, I said, that's not healthy. So I really, as a parent, I, you know, and I've always been outspoken, but I really had to, and they understood because guess what? They were teachers and they also had children at home that they are trying to homeschool. And, you know, they're trying to teach our children, you know, uh, you know, college preparation math. And I'm saying, you just have to stop with all of the, 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 the Google worksheets and all the video stuff all day long. He went from 7 a.m., yeah. you know, till two or three o'clock. That's, that was too long of a day. And this was yeah. all year last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, so, uh, so I remembered, you know, he finally got his permit. So I'd be like, what do you want to do? You know? And so, you know, we would go out driving and he said to, he said to me, he loves music. He's into music. He wants to do music engineering. Uh, he's been writing jingles. Actually, he's been selling jingles <laughs> that fabulous. in Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, he's been, but that's his, that's been his creative outlet. He's like, mom, I want to do this with my room. I want to do that. And I said, you know what? You do whatever you need to do because, you know, who am I, you know, to say, no, you can't do that or no, because you're in your room where he's in his room, you know, thank God we're in the burbs, we're in the suburbs, you know, he has his basketball court in the front yard. We've got the backyard, but it, for me, it was so important as a parent, as a mom that I had to say, you know what, this it's, it's overwhelming for him. And I needed to call and reach out. And I reached out to all of his teachers individually. And we were on the phone for an hour or two. And some of those teachers, you could even feel, you could feel the weight that they had because they also had children that were trying to be, you know what I mean? Work through this dynamic of Zoom and Google Classrooms. And, and, and then when we had a thunderstorm, you have no internet. Right, exactly. So they couldn't even track to see, do you know what I mean? If, if you were in the class. No. So it was, it was very it, stressful, but um, for, for me, those were the two big things that I learned was I needed to check my heart first to see where, where you know what I mean? If I was giving off too much energy or no, you just got to get it done because sometimes we as parents or even teachers or coaches, sometimes we want to push too much and then we have to realize and recognize, whoa, we need to pull back. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's very telling. It's a beautiful story too, because you know, our kids need music. They need physical education or phys physical activity. Yes. You know, and they can't just be sitting in front of screens all day. <laughs> no, no. And it's interesting because, you know, even the dynamic with what I do, choreographing the shows, I was supposed to choreograph Evita up in Princeton, New Jersey. I was supposed to do another show in Pennsylvania. Nothing, zero, everything, shut down, Broadway, shut down, theater, shut down, Disney, shut down. And that's a way that people come, you know, into the theater or to a concert to relax and unwind, you know what I mean? And forget about their stresses. And when we don't have the arts, you know, that that's then where do we run to? Where, where is our outlet? You know, and, and it needs to be a healthy. That's what I tell my teenagers. It has to be a healthy outlet. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And music and the arts, fine arts and martial arts, you know, what we do with our karate school. It's yeah. so important. These kids have so much energy and it needs to be channeled in a way that's 
positive, that's uplifting, that's going to have them, you know, work their heart rate, that's going to have them make sure that they're not gaining too much weight. You know, we have a lot of kids that are obese, you know, juvenile diabetes, because they're sitting, they're sitting yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah. I and know. they're not moving. I know. Renee, can you maybe uh, talk to us a little bit about what you would say is key to your students feeling confidence and feeling good about themselves? Sounds like some of what you've been talking about just now can help with confidence if they're not just made to sit there and do all these worksheets all the time and all that. But what, what, um, what would you say to that as far as building confidence and feeling good about themselves? Yeah, uh, for me, what, what I love to do is I love to encourage. I've always been an encourager. My mom said that ever since I was young. Like I would write to my friends, I would write them notes, you know, or little smiley faces. And what I was doing, I don't know if you can see this, but what I was doing with the kids in Uganda was oh. I was sharing like the little stars, you know, and the little hearts after they would finish dancing. Oh, you know what I mean? I or like a, big thumbs, like, like a big thumbs up. And I still do that. Like till this day, uh, you know, my children are 17 and 20 and I will still take my time to write cards and just, just slide it under the door. You know, mm. I love you because it's easy to say this, but I truly believe that our actions, what we do, not just what we say, but our actions speak louder than the words. So for me, I'll check in with my students, you know, from, I have a student that I coached yesterday from England and she's getting ready to go to London for the first time for, you know, a, a, a theater workshop. She just graduated. She's about to go to university in September, we hope, you know, because they're kind of on a semi lockdown too in England and it changes from week to week. So, you know, I check up with them, you know, I'll send her a text. Hey, Amy, how are you? What are you up to? You know, because kids are smart. They know, they know when you're not paying attention. <laughs> they yeah. know when you're like, well, I love you. Bye. And you're like, oh, wait, what about, you know, yeah. or I'll tap, I'll tap on my son's door. I'll tap on his door. He's like, okay, mom, you know, cause he just turned 17. Right. Yeah. So I'll tap on the door. Like what you doing? Sometimes he'll let me in and I'll just <laughs> sit and listen to his music. You know, I'll just sit on the bed and just listen, you know, I'll just listen. I won't, I won't say anything. I'll have him talk first and then, you know, then we'll kind of, how you doing? And, you know, kind of like slowly, you know, because I, I could be one of those parents. I love to be involved in everything. You know, I was in PTO with my children, you know, a marching band parent when my daughter was in marching band and this, you know, but sometimes as they get older too, you know, we want to make sure that we pull back because, you know, they're young adults. Right. They have their own mind, their own feelings. Uh, and, and a huge thing that I learned, woo, Give them space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're in the house, right? Everybody's locked in, locked down. We have to give them space and freedom to feel however they're going to feel. And that sometimes for me as a parent is hard because, you know, you want to, oh, I'm going to protect my baby or, you know, I don't want them to feel this or I don't want them to feel that. And that's not healthy. Right. You know, when we're told, oh, suck it up. You know, yeah. be brave, do that. All those, those are like the old wives tales, you know, like that our kind of generation, you know, kind of was taught mm -hmm. like, you know, you have to be, you know, just stoic and nothing hurts you. No, it's, that's that, that doesn't help because then right. what they do is they just push everything down right. and then it just, and however it's going to come out, it's going to come, come out. Come out. <laughs> it's going to it come, out. come out. It may come out 10, 15 years later, but it's got to come out. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and so I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in smothering and smushing down and, you know, I believe, okay. And, and this is how you feel right now. And, and, and sometimes I will even, and I can't, I can only share this because of my own children that I have. And then those that I've mentored is, yep. I, I'm, I don't understand how you're feeling right now. Maybe I can't understand but I respect that. And mommy or Miss Renee, as they call me, I'm going to pull back, you know, and when you, when you are ready to talk, then we'll talk or whatever you need me to do. That's what my husband and I said to our own children, whatever you need me for, you know, I'm going to be there mm -hmm. and it needs to be. And this is so hard for us. I think as adults, parents, aunts, uncles, right? Godparents, we have to not be so critical and like you have the checklist 
oh, my daughter's, you know, whatever, you know, honor society and my son's on the, and, and it becomes a trophy thing. And that's stressful as it is for the next generation, for the next generation. And then what we've been through the last two years with the COVID to add on top of that, I know. that's a, that's a ticking bomb. Do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and my husband, uh, he, you know, not only is he a martial arts instructor and a karate instructor, but, you know, he's trained where he teaches children at our school that have Asperger's and that have Tourette's syndrome. He is so patient. Like you, like to, I believe to be an educator and to be able to teach children with special needs, you got to have special magic. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, you really do. You have to have a, a passion to want to help and make their lives better. Yes. Yep. And patience. And yeah. that's what I'm learning as I get older, because, you know, when we're younger, we're like, let's go, let's get it going. Let's get, and now I'm like, whoo, you know, like literally I'd be like, okay, mama's body hurts right now. I'm going to give myself some patience. And, you know, I, and I'll say this to my students, I got to give myself grace, you know, and some mercy, but guess what? I have to give it back. I have to give it back to them too. And yes. that's why I love coaching. That's why I love teaching. Why? It keeps me on my toes because I'm like, oh, I just told you to do that. Two pirouettes or triple. Oh, I need to still dance too. I need to still do the same thing. <laughs> or, oh, I'm telling you, you need to hydrate and drink your water and get exercise. Oh, I need to do that. So it's, you know, long gone our grandparents day, you know, children should be seen and not heard. I don't believe in that at all. That's like an old, old myth. Yeah. And the, what was it? Don't, um, don't do as I do, do as I say. What is that even? No, mean? Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> Children will listen to what you do. <laughs> That's right. That's, you know what? Guess what? You're doing the same. Their little eyes, their little ears, their little hearts, they're looking. And they're, and, and I, and I tell this, you know, and my husband and I both say this to our teenagers. Look, I, I remember when they were younger and they'd be making noise and whatever. And I'm just like, I would just go, dear God, help me. And they're like, mommy, who are you talking to? I'm like, God, because right now you're getting on my nerves, you know? <laughs> and I would have to laugh about it. You know what I mean? I would have to walk away, you know, and, and, and clear my head and my heart. But they knew, you know, they knew oh, yeah. the struggle that I was going through. Okay. Are we going to have a punishment? Are we having a timeout and what's going on right now? You know, yeah. and I, I'm, I, I don't do this, but sometimes I would videotape them because my husband, when we had our other karate school, by the time he would come home at seven o'clock, they're sleeping. He's like, oh, they're so peaceful. I'm like, oh, you missed five to six o'clock. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you missed dinner. And this is right. This is when they were toddlers, you know, and like, yeah. the, you know, like three to five or six, like, I don't want to go to sleep. I'm not tired. I don't want to eat my veggies. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I love you, but you got to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, and, and, and he's, he's very, um, uh, it's funny because people think my husband's retired military or he's not, he's just very structured and very disciplined because he did not have that as a child. So yeah. he sees the importance. I had that, but then I kind of had to, you know, release it a little bit more because of my creative, you know, the creativity I can be where it's like, bam, bam, bam as well. And we both realized for our, for our kids, that wasn't, you know what I mean? We had to find a nice balance, but we were always on the same team. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh no, you know, your dad didn't say that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so whether I was either at the theater doing a show and he was watching them or he was at the karate, the other karate school and then would come back late. It was like, mm, no. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be unified, you know, yeah. together and, and you do, and you do have to have, um, I would say goals but they need to be achievable and they need to be small, you know, and then you need to encourage, you know, we'll say, you know, praise, do you know what I mean? Correct. And then praise, you know what I mean? So it's like, you have, you have to, because I, I remember that's what I got when I was younger and as a teenager and you, yeah, come on, Renee, you can do it. You can, it's going to be hard. I'm like, Oh, but then once I did it, I was like, yes, here we go. You know? Yeah. And so, so there's a way I think that we can speak that is, um, that's going to be seasoned with love and patience. And so, cause that's how I'd want somebody to talk to me, you know what I mean? Or my mentors that, that still mentor me, I want them to say, Renee, you know, you need to do what you got to do, but I believe in you. Yeah. And so I say the same thing to my students. I, I know you're having a rough day. Uh, yeah. God cry it out, whatever, but we're still going to keep doing those sit-ups or we're still, do you know what I mean? Because they've hired me to bring the best out in them, not yeah. just for the performing arts, but it's for everyday living. 
Yeah. It's for everyday living. Well, that's it. How many of your students are going to end up being a professional actress or singer or, you know, musician? You know, it's not about that. It's about the discipline. It's about teaching behaviors. Yeah, you know, you, we're already getting, unfortunately, short on time here. But I wonder, you must have some beautiful examples of how you've seen the lives of your students totally change from, um, from the work that you've done with them. Can you... Uh, share any example of that with us? Wow, you know what, yes. And, and you know, Mia, you, you hit it on the, the nail on the head. It's not so much about, oh, they booked a show or they did this or that. If they do, wow, that's the icing on the cake. But for me, when a parent texts me or emails me and says, Miss Renee, thank you so much, you know, um, so-and-so, she's not as shy anymore, or she's more, you know, outspoken, or they're more focused, or they're more organized, and this is in daily life, not just what they want to do, that, that blesses me, that says, you know what, yep, I'm doing my job, I'm doing what God's put me on earth to do, is to mentor, encourage, and inspire, it just happens to be through the performing arts, you know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Don, what I've seen is, has been over the last couple of years, um, I've had one student just started picking up the guitar at 18, 19. He was one of my tap students, Levi. I'm shouting you out. He got a full, full four-year ride to Berkeley University to play classical guitar. He's in his third year at Berkeley. I have another student that's in her second year at Boston Conservatory as a ballerina. Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, they, they've been, and these are some of their, their families, single moms, like single parents, not able to afford, who can afford $70,000, $80,000 a year anyway? Exactly. Nobody. Exactly. Right. right. But people don't realize, I think they're not realizing it. And yes, they also got in academically for their academics of their passion and their skill for the music and the before, like geniuses, like just brilliant, oozing out of them. And I'm like, I think you can actually do this. So when they applied for the scholarships, I went through every step with them. And now, and now they're, they're, they're doing their thing. And so that, that warms my heart because people told them, oh, no, you can't do that. You can't afford to go to Berkeley. You can't afford to be at Boston. And they're doing it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's just like, it warms my heart. I'm like, yes. You know? Yes. Sometimes when somebody tells you you can't do something, that makes you want it that much more. <laughs> you know, I, I'm one of those, and so is my husband. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah okay, let's go. You know, it's like, yeah, gotta, exactly. You know, boxing gloves on. But sometimes we do have to do that, and we have to press through and fight. But I'm also learning, too, especially with my own children and with others. I, sometimes it's best to just and then pull it back. You know what I mean? And, and take a breath and say, you know what? I love you. I'm here if you need me. I'm here if you need me. And that I feel as though the, is the most important thing that we as educators, mentors, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, no matter what, because it does take a village, I believe, yeah. to raise, raise children and not just smart children, not just talented children, but children that have empathy, that want to care about others and love in spite of. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter that we're not the same religion, the same race, the same color that should never matter, right? Yeah, because we're all, we're the human race. We're the same race, right? We're one we race, are. the human race. And when we cut, we all bleed red, you yeah. know? So it's, it's, it yeah. can be that simple. Yeah, absolutely. We are, we are all God's children and, you know, it. You know we got to take care of our, our planet here and everyone yes. inhabits it. So yeah, we do. We do. And wow, God was amazing. All the colors and the rainbows and the different languages. And, oh, I miss traveling me. I really do. I miss traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm shouting out and sending out prayers to my uh, Deutsche family, my friends and family in Germany, because I have a lot of family and friends there, the flooding that's been going on in Germany and Belgium. I've been texting them one by one and they're like, we're fine. We lost the house, but we're fine. And I'm like, thank God. So it's. And you know, we lost the house, but we're fine. You know, exactly. we have so much to be grateful for. Yep. And, you know, I think when we start our day with gratitude, it's also going to just seep out into other areas of our lives. Definitely. So, and us sharing, us sharing, like our, our generation sharing to the next generation because they're the ones that are going to be, you know, taking care of the environment and the water and, and giving back to those less fortunate. And if we don't do it, they're, they're not going to do it. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. So we, you know, like I say, hey, look, I may fall and stumble. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but I'm gonna keep on moving. Come on, you coming with me? Do you know what I mean? And and, and have them follow me and yeah. see what I'm doing. And then great. If you want to go ahead and and do you know what I mean and contribute your time and talents and treasures for whatever cause that may be, then mm-hmm. then go for it and do it. Well, oh Renee, my gosh, we, so we can go for, on and on and yeah. on about all the ways that we can, <laughs> you know, pour into our youth and just make sure that we're giving them all that they need and all yes. the tools. It's been yes. just very inspiring to hear just your your story about how you've blessed kids and your approach and everything it just means so much. And we never like to bring these to a close, but the moment comes where we, oh, I we need to do that. But uh Thank you so much for everything you've shared with us today. And uh, friends at Activate and Thrive, we are working with, with uh, wellness, both on a cellular level and, uh, and just uh, spiritually and physically and everything. And so if you'd like to, we love oh, that. I love it. If you'd like so to much. connect with us and ask any more questions, we'd be happy to engage with you. And um, we and, will put Renee's website in our in our comments. And right. Renee, before we part, because we could go on and on and on, <laughs> just what is the the best advice that you would offer to any youngster who's just struggling with trying to feel their purpose or what inspires them? Wow, you know what that that is a huge question, and I think for me, what helps me is the journaling you know, writing it down, like if they have a dream or a goal or a vision, do not let anyone tell you, no, you cannot do it. Don't let anyone say you can't do it, or you can't be this, or you can't be that. And for them to write it down. And if they have, if they're blessed and fortunate enough to have family or friends that are in their corner, you only need a few. My grandma used to tell me you only need one or two good friends. You don't need, you know, yeah. Trim away, trim away the negative. Yeah. And you know, exactly. you, you have your village, you have your posse and you have your blinders on and you just continue. If you believe in your heart, if you know that that's all you think of and dream of that, you have to follow that passion and you have to see it through. It may take you different routes. It may, you know, you may not be on stage. You may be behind the scenes writing a score or a new Broadway show or a script. You may be a music therapist and teaching children who knows But, you know, you never, never tell yourself no, even though people around you may say no, you continue, you keep going, you keep fighting. Yeah, you believe in yourself because I truly believe that is the key. And at the end of your night, when you go to bed and you're like, you know what, thank you. Thank you. It is well with my soul. That's what I say. You know what, God, I didn't do everything on my list today, but you know what, it's well with my soul because if I reached out to one person today. And if I gave them love, then, 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 then I am thankful to have that opportunity. Well, that's that's beautiful. a beautiful Thank way so to much. just close this out today. Yeah. Thank you Talk. so much for joining us, everybody. Look for these uh, chats every Thursday at noon East Coast U.S. time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much, Renee, for joining us today. It was Thank a you both. Blessings, blessings to you. Blessings like that. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.